A cloud. No one has ever seen God. And of course, we know that. It's as though God is hidden, hidden in a cloud. And a cloud is a very good image for our experience of God. A cloud can completely obscure a mountain top. And if we're in the cloud, all the familiar landmarks have gone. We're very disorientated. We don't know where we are. And so it is with God. But this cloud which hides God is not impermeable. It's not a brick wall. It doesn't stop any communication. It doesn't stop all communication from happening. When we're in a cloud, the cloud doesn't completely block out all of our senses. We can still hear, although it's difficult to know where our voice is coming from. We can still touch and taste. But we're definitely out of our normal territory that we know how to navigate. We're outside of our comfort zone. And when we're outside of our comfort zone, that's a good place to encounter God. God can speak to us in new ways. And when we come to the stories of Moses in the Old Testament, it's in a cloud on a mountain top that Moses has his closest encounters with God. And those encounters are profound for himself and also very fruitful for others because it's in the cloud that he receives the law and the promise for the people. And these encounters with Moses in a cloud were of great interest to some of the spiritual writers of Christianity. In the early centuries, Gregory of Nyssa in the fourth century, in fact, was particularly interested in the life of Moses and these encounters in clouds. He puts it this way, Moses boldly approached the very darkness itself and entered the invisible things. He teaches, I think, by the things he did, that one who is going to associate intimately with God must go beyond all that is visible and believe that the divine is there where the understanding does not reach. So that's the point. No one has ever seen God. We can't grasp God with our reasoning mind. We can't grasp God with our thoughts. Because this meeting with God is an intimate meeting, Gregory of Nyssa says. It's to do with love, it's to do with relationship. And you can't fall in love with God by thinking about God. You can't fall in love with anyone by thinking about them. And if you do think yourself into believing that you love someone, you're very soon going to discover that you fooled yourself. And that will be a tragic mistake. And so it's the same for intimacy with God. It's not so much an effort of the head, of the mind or the will, but it's an affair of the heart that involves everything that we are, that catches us up whole and takes us beyond ourselves. So that image of a cloud is one that's taken up very prominently by the 14th century spiritual text on meditation, the cloud of unknowing. The writer of the cloud, we don't know the name of him or her, has at the core of the work the idea of two clouds. There's a cloud of unknowing in which God is hidden, because we can't know God in that way. The author says, of God himself no man can think. He may well be loved, but not thought. By love he may be grasped and held, but by thought never. So we have to put our own thoughts in another cloud, in a cloud of forgetting. And it's only if we put our own thoughts in a cloud of forgetting that paradoxically 
we are able to direct ourselves into the cloud of unknowing where God has hidden beyond thought. So when he's talking about the work of meditation, the author of the cloud tells us to allow ourselves to forget all of our thoughts and feelings, to put them in the cloud of forgetting, but to try and strike the cloud of unknowing with a dart of longing love. You should reach out with a naked intent to God, he says, with no desire but himself. And in order to do that, he says, you can have this naked intent wrapped up and enfolded in one word. Fasten this word to your heart so that it never leaves you, come what may. So we take up our word, we repeat it in our heart, come what may, giving it our attention, come what may. If any thought should press upon you to ask what you would have, answer it with no other word but this one word, says the cloud author. So he knows what it means to be human. If any thought should try to interrupt us, would try to steal our attention away, all we have to do is answer that distraction by coming back to the word, the same one word. The cloud author again, and if you should be tempted to analyse this word, answer that you will have it whole and undeveloped. So there we are, you're not to be tempted into thinking about your distractions. If you will but hold fast, the cloud author says, be sure that the temptation will not last long. So whatever sort of distraction comes your way, the author of the cloud of unknowing says, you have one answer. And that one answer is your word, your mantra. You keep on saying the mantra and anything that invites you away from it, you answer it by coming back to the one word. Or, as John Main says, the only advice I have to give you is say your word. Thank you.